Hello everyone, uh, this is another video from series of Lambda function. Today I'm going to show one of the way to improve the performance of Lambda function. These days most of the developers are doing the same mistake which impact the Lambda performance very badly. Right, uh, just before kickoff, uh, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, it would be really appreciated. Let's get in. I'm in AWS console and I have a two Lambda function already created which are pretty much similar code. The, uh, the first Lambda function is a uh, demo Lambda performance and the second one demo Lambda performance too. There's uh, only one difference is that initializing the AWS client for DynamoDB. If I go to the first one, as you can see the pretty much what the, what the code does, it's getting the AWS SDK for the DynamoDB table and within the handler function, it's created the DynamoDB client and then it does the, it's try to get the DynamoDB item from demo lambda user table and which is giving the user ID, which is the key. And it's to the some login. So basically it's to the uh, logging into console. That's the, the function does. It's pretty much similar. So if I go to the lambda function two, the second one, it does the same thing, but only difference as I mentioned, the creating the client. So in this case, in the Lambda function two, it's creating the client outside the handler function. This is our handler function. And uh, it's outside the handler function, they create the client and reuse it. If I go to the first one, you can see the client is get created inside the our handler function. That's uh, uh, different, nothing else. So both codes are running on Node.js. As Lambda function retrieves the data from DynamoDB table, I already created a DynamoDB table with the demo Lambda user and only just three records in it. Furthermore, I have executed these two Lambda function using the test utility. It's come with the Lambda itself. I executed uh, these two function and got some logs and uh, record the execution time of each function. Let's have a look the result. Right, here's the dashboard for each function. I created the dashboard for each function. I will go through how to create this dashboard if you are interested in the later part of this video. But let's focus on the performance at the right now. The first widget is Lambda which has a client inside the handler. Where the bottom widget is uh, where the client outside the handler function, the DynamoDB client we create, we initialize outside the handler function. The x-axis is basically say when, when the Lambda function get executed, for example, in this case, it's the, uh, this all the, it's, this is 1746, 1739. So this is a time where it's got executed. And the uh, uh, y-axis, if you go to the y-axis, it shows the execution time in a millisecond. Furthermore, uh, each bar, so for example, this each bar shows the 99 percentile. So you can see the 99 percentile. I'll show you the logs again, uh, if you're interested in the letter. And this is the 99 percentile of execution time. That's mean for this given uh, minute, if we executed 100 of invocation, 99th of invocation completed within the 461 or less. So it took a more 461 milliseconds or less. That means 99 percentile is uh, uh, the way it's, it's working. So same thing uh, for, for, for the other one. So in this, for the given uh, time for 1746, 99 percentiles is 365. As you can see, top widget has less performance compared to the uh, bottom uh, bottom widget. So over here, uh, max duration for the max duration for the the bottom one is a 354, and where the first widget is an 598. That's a max duration. Let's see why. Let's go to the code first and see what's happening in the code. Why the, the second lambda is performing well 
compared to the, the first right I mean the lambda function too let's see what happened when the in request come the when the first request hit the lambda AWS create the runtime environment to create the lambda code execute the lambda code so in this case it create a, a node.js environment then it initializes any code outside the handler function. So you can see uh, this is our handler function. Any code outside the handler function, that means this all these code will be executed as a second step. Lastly, it executes the code inside the handler function. When the uh, second request hit the lambda, so it executes only the code inside the handler function. So first request, it's come, it's executed this bit and plus this. When the second request hit, it's execute only the inside the this handler function, the code inside the handler function. Now hope you already know why it's happening. If you go to the first Lambda function, our client is inside the handler function. For the each request, it's get executed and it create a new client. As you mentioned, now you you already know why the second lambda is more performing than first one. Yes, it is obviously the DynamoDB client is reused for the subsequent request in the second lambda because it's a client is outside. But for the first lambda, it's keep creating the uh, this client DynamoDB client. It's keep creating for each request. That is a little bit overhead for each uh, invocation. So if you have uh, any code which can reuse for subsequent request, then please make them outside the handler functions as we did for the DynamoDB uh, client. So one of the common scenario is uh, like fetching the secret for database connection. For example, if you have a, a Lambda function which connect to the database, for connecting database, you need uh, some credentials. So you can bring the credentials from a secret manager or parameter store, which can be done outside the handler function. And that same client or same secret, in this case, same secret can be used for subsequent uh, request because secret is not going to change and it's not depend on the uh, each request. So right, that is uh, one way of improve uh, performance of Lambda very easily. There's another way you can improve the performance of a call start. I'll, I'll go through the call start later. Uh, uh, if you're interesting, I have a, another video with the lifetime of the Lambda function. That's where I'm talking about the call start. And if we briefly explain what is call start is when the request hit the, when the very, when the very first request hit the AWS Lambda, what's going to happen AWS has to create the uh, environment. So that is the uh, init state and that is called call start because creating the Node.js environment in this case is take time. That is leads to the call start. So we can redo, remove the call start completely using something called provision concurrency, which greatly enhance the Lambda performance. So I'll be creating another video to uh, talk about the provision concurrency so if you are if you are like yes stay tuned if you're just wondering how we get to this dashboard i'll quickly go through and show you how to get them this dashboard is created using a cloudwatch log for this uh, particular lambda function the log file is something like this if i go to here this is a log file and uh, we need to grab the build duration. Basically, what we after the build duration, you can see build duration under report. And there are few, uh, many invocation and it has a, a different uh, build duration. We need to grab this build duration for each invoke. We can query this value using the log inside. Let's go to the uh, log inside. I click on the log inside. It's under CloudWatch. And then you can filter out the particular Lambda. So in our case, I'm picking the Lambda function performance two. This is a two. And then I'll paste the code. This is the code I use to create a, that's a widget. If I do a little bit here, uh, what does it do? It What does it do at the very beginning? It's filter the type report. If I go to the uh, 
CloudWatch. So we are need to we need to get the this re record with the we start with the report. That's why it's doing the our first filter. Then the second filter it's ignore the any record which has a init duration. This will avoid any duration which has a cost start. And then do a aggregation on a build duration. So you can see this is a stat which is come with a keyword for the AWS, and we are doing aggregation or build duration. Uh, this build build duration is automatically populated by AWS for us. We can use it. Then uh, we are using the inbuilt function, which is a percentile, which is inbuilt function, and we giving the 99 percentile plus we giving the alias then we can see in the dashboard and after that we get this aggregate value for a one minute window we can change the it's 10 minute one day or one hour or few second so that is something you can uh, configure so in my case i am doing a window for a one minute then lastly then you need to select the uh, visualization so this is if i run this guy for you can select the let's say 12 hours and over here all right you can see the uh, logs file basically this is a log file but we need to add this into dashboard what we can do we can go to the visualization and you can select the graph type in my case i'm selecting the bar whatever the type you can select then you need to click on the add to dashboard so once you click you can create a new dashboard and add this widget to new dashboard or you can select the uh, existing one. I'm selecting the existing one and give it the uh, test. Test widget and give it the name and click on a dashboard. So, right, our dashboard, the widget got added to the existing dashboard where you can see the actual data. So if you want to update, you can click on here and click on edit and you go back to the look inside and where you can update the or change the query. So this is uh, uh, this is cool feature. If you if you like, uh, basically you, I'll, I'll find this feature that creating the dashboard is really easy. Then you can see multiple Lambda function in a one single view. This is really helpful if you have a more lambda function and need to do some uh, uh, check some metrics right that's all for today uh, lastly uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe i really appreciate it uh, furthermore uh, click on the bell icon will notify you for my future video and won't miss any then and uh, lastly uh, we will see you in another demo video thank you have a good day